Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us on a very important hearing. <clears throat> this morning, our committee will focus on an issue of enormous importance, ensuring that victims of sexual violence are fairly treated through our criminal justice system. Two years ago, we made important progress in this area by incorporating a package of new rights for victims of sexual violence, and we uh, obviously put that in the federal criminal code. By law, vic victims of rape in federal cases now have the right to have their sexual assault evidence preserved for a specific period to, to be notified before the evidence is destroyed by law enforcement and to receive the results of a forensic exam. Today, we will review the implementations of that law, known as the Survivor's Bill of Rights. We'll also explore additional ways to encourage more victims of sexual violence to come forward and report the crimes to the authorities. So we welcome back, once again, Amanda Unin to this committee. I introduced a package of survivor rights as an amendment to a bill before this committee, the year 2016, and I did it at Amanda's urging. After working closely with Amanda on multiple drafts of that legislation, the Judiciary Committee unanimously approved these rights as an amendment to the Adam Walsh Reauthorization Act of 2016. The Senate then approved the legislation 89 to zero before the House followed suit with similar legislation some weeks later. The President Obama signed the Survivor's Bill of Rights on, uh, in 2016. But we still need to do more to fully understand the reasons why less than half of rape survivors ever come forward and report the crime. Some victim advocates argue that our justice uh, system, uh, criminal justice system, uh, re-victimizes survivors. Other survivors maintain that the failure to report is due to fear of reprisal, a desire to keep the crime a secret from others, or a perception that the police cannot help. I hope that Amanda, as well as our noted actor, an athlete, athlete, Terry Crews, who's with her, who have bravely come forward to share their experiences, can help shed more light on this issue through their testimony today. I intend to advance additional legislation to further promote crime victims' rights. More crime victims should receive notice of mechanisms for enforcing their rights under federal law as just one example. We also need to ensure that the Justice Department employees receive training on victims' rights as another idea. And as suggested by the Government Accountability Office, we could take additional steps to improve the collection of victims' restitution. Finally, I look forward on the second panel to hearing the national, from the National Institute of Justice. Uh, that institute convened a working group to develop best practices. The working group was for the purpose of collecting uh, and preserving evidence in sexual assault cases with their ideas of best practices. They have 35 recommendations. These recommendations were developed by the working group and the product of about two years of work. They include suggested ways to better support rape victims through the criminal justice process. When victims have this support, they're more likely to report the crime and cooperate with law enforcement. And I'd like to thank Dr. Howard Spivak of the Institute, the lead author of the report containing these recommendations for coming here today to share his expertise with us. Uh, in closing my opening remarks, I hope that today's hearing will help us better understand two things. First, the impact that the Survivor's Bill of Rights has had 
and hopefully that comes with the expectations that we had with it. And if we haven't, I want to hear a candid re response. And secondly, what more can we do to better promote justice for victims in the criminal justice system? I now turn to Senator Feinstein, the ranking member.